I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I don't have my eyes! I didn't misspell anything! Not once, not one time! Welcome back to my Hilariosity series covering really crappy video game movies. I've already talked about DOA, Dead or Alive, House of the Dead, and now we're moving on to Doom. Because out of all of the video games that could have become a movie, Doom got made. We don't need a Metal Gear Solid movie. We don't need a Metroid Prime movie. We don't need a Legend of Zelda movie. We'll make movies like Doom because those are easy to make. I mean, really think about it. Almost every video game to movie adaptation is based off of a very simple game, save for maybe the Tomb Raider movies. Dead or Alive, a fighting game based off of Jiggly Women? House of the Dead, an arcade game with zombies? Why are these the games that are being made into movies? because they don't take much effort, that's why. So Doom to this day is still a very popular FPS game. We've had a new incarnation of it fairly recently. But back in the day, this was a very simple game that broke some new boundaries and people were impressed by it and people enjoyed playing it. So of course, now we have a movie starring The Rock and Carl Urban. And as this movie progresses, you can just tell that they are struggling to figure out how to make it a movie. It's like there's one scene that we'll get to later in the review where you're like, okay, this is why they want wanted to make this movie because they just wanted to tribute the game in some way. Every other scene is just a horribly derivative mashup of Aliens and Predator. So this movie opens up with some scientists who are in the middle of some incredible trauma and just count how many times this guy blinks. This is Dr. Carmack. Classified research, all by ID 6627. We've had a level 5 breach. Implement quarantine procedures immediately. Implement quarantine procedures now. So as I said, The Rock and Carl Urban are both in this movie. That's right. Hobbs from Fast and the Furious and Judge Dredd himself are in this movie. That is potentially awesome. That could be really great. They really don't do much with, <laughs> with these guys, unfortunately. They basically spend the entire movie sneaking around. We'll talk more about that soon. So I guess we're in the year 2046. That's a very interesting 2046 handheld game you've got there. Yeah, you're holding it the wrong way, buddy. And why are these guys playing baseball so dangerously? It's like somebody's gonna get seriously hurt before they have to go on this death-defying mission. <laughs> So the blinky guy sends a distress signal and our heroes go out into the fray. This movie really reminds me of Predator in so many ways. The other day I went up to my girlfriend I said, you know, I'd like a little pussy. She said, me too. Mine's as big as a house. You know, kid, it's funny. A couple days ago I asked Sarge for a little pussy. And the next day he brought you onto the team. I mean, the fact that both movies feature a joke about female anatomy before the characters go out into the fray, that's just one thing. I mean, there's a lot more we're gonna talk about. So everybody gets zapped somewhere, Galaxy Quest style. Then we get a very awkward flashback explaining why this character who's just been introduced has been cut in half. Because we really need to know everything, and we really should have flashbacks to show us everything, because we all know the best form of storytelling is flashbacks. Excessive ones, preferably. Hello everyone, I bet you're wondering how I got here today. Well, I'll let you know. Well, I just came over and sat right down in this chair, picked up my notepad, and got ready to talk about Doom. So the guy who killed Bruce Wayne's parents is in this film, and uh, he's a creepy ass motherfucker. We're under a level five quarantine. So I am just gonna have to strip search you girls. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Hold that thought. We're under a level five quarantine, so I am just gonna have to strip. Or, Sergeant. And this is one of those movies that falls into the worst trap ever for scientist characters. It just makes every character just spout out all these techno babble words that mean nothing to us. And in fact, mean nothing to anybody really. It's just supposed to be like smart words. Archaeology, genetics, and weapons research. Magnesium, chromium, lead. Dolly shot, crane shot. Crash, zoom, pan, match, cut, fade to black. Like, it's like that. It's just me spouting off filmmaking terms, and that's it. And right around here is where this movie becomes the sneaking movie. Everyone just starts to sneak around the facility. It's very reminiscent of Aliens. It just doesn't have the focus 
that James Cameron gave to that film. This movie has a lot of people sneaking around an eerily dark facility, and there's some serious shit going on somewhere in this facility, and so you feel a little on edge, but the movie really is just trying to recreate things we've seen in other films, and it thinks that just by showing us the aesthetics of these things, for some reason the movie's gonna be that good. So they find the blinky guy, who proceeds to rip off his ear. I'm betting he didn't have a very good day. And this is where I started to notice the lighting in this movie is actually fairly awful. It's not like you're watching something that's ugly, it's just far too dim. You can't really focus on it, and I watched this movie on Blu-ray, so that's saying something. So there's a character in this movie that takes his religion very seriously, and if he takes God's name in vain, he actually cuts himself on his wrist, deeply, and draws blood. Now I get it, but like, you're a soldier. You're in the middle of like this thing. You want to be at the top of your game. You don't want to be slicing holes in yourself. Wait till you get home or something. So they find this zombie and they ask the zombie a question. Sir, are you okay? Yeah, I don't think he's okay. I, I think he's pretty fucked. So in what is becoming a tradition in all of my hilariosities, I must point out films that have awful ADR moments, because it seems like every hilariosity I ever do, there's always a terrible audio dubbed moment. And this film has one for The Rock. Everybody on me, watch your goddamn footing! Everybody on me, watch your goddamn footing! Everybody on me, watch your goddamn footing! In this movie, at this point, you're just like, at some point... Is it gonna be anything other than them sneaking around? It takes them forever to find anything. It takes forever for anything to happen. This movie should have just been called Sneak. Forget about Doom. Why is this film even called Doom? Because the video game is called Doom? I mean, at least Dead or Alive is about the Dead or Alive tournament. House of the Dead, there's a house on this island and there's zombies, so House of the Dead, I guess. Super Mario Brothers has Super Mario Brothers, despite the fact that one of them is Puerto Rican and the other one's English and they should never be brothers, but they're not Italian in the movie and that's really dumb. That's my rant on Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> Honestly, it's really just like, hey, the game is called Doom, so we'll call the movie Doom. Why is this called Doom? It should have been called Sneak. Or better yet, Aliens Predator ripoff movie based off a video game called Doom. So a creature attacks these guys, and surprisingly, there isn't that much CGI in this movie for a while. It's actually like a realistic creature, despite the fact that it's such dim lighting and you can't really tell what's going on. That is something I was proud of. I was like, oh, yay, you guys did the real stuff. Yay, practical. All right, we got something to look forward to here besides the rock stare. And of course, what would any movie with a bunch of men sneaking around a facility be without a dick joke? You know, Duke, I bet secretly you have a big heart. Oh, yeah. And that's not the only secret big thing I got. One of the biggest disappointments for me about this movie is actually The Rock's character. Usually I really like The Rock in movies, and this is one of the few movies where I'm just like, Ugh, I don't really feel him. He, he has nothing to him. He's just this guy who's like The Rock, and he walks around a facility. And eventually he just starts going insane, which we'll get into in a minute, but there's nothing to his character. He's just The Rock. And it's like they just took someone famous and said, put him on screen. Put them in this weird environment and it'll look like aliens and predators, so it'll be good. So everybody gets evacuated from the facility. And this is something I really genuinely do like about this movie. I like the feel of isolation. I love sci-fi movies where characters are isolated in a strange environment. That's really cool. I wish this movie could have been great. It had so many fun little things that could have made this movie actually really fun. This honestly, is like the perfect movie that would come on the Sci-Fi Channel Friday night at 2.30 a.m. <laughs> That's the perfect place for this movie. That's where this movie exists. And if you see the movie in that circumstance, you might have fun watching it. As far as characterization goes in this film, Carl Urban is probably the best character. Everyone else is just a quirk. Do you know what I mean? Everyone else just has like a thing about them that makes them a a character, I guess, because they all have their things. The one guy cuts himself if he says God's name in vain. Everyone has their own little things about them to make them interesting people, but it's just a quirk. I mean, we were talking about similarities to Predator. There's even a character in this movie named Mac. Talk to me. Talk to me, Mac. Mac! Mac! So eventually the revelation comes forth that the creatures in this movie were at one point in time people. Possibly the scientists 
that inhabited this area. So everyone starts freaking out even more and The Rock eventually finds the BFG. No, not the big friendly giant, the big fucking gun. It's like they had to have it, you know, and that's fine. I, that's not, I have no problem with that. I have, that's awesome. That's fine. That should be in this movie. It was just like Link opening a crate and finding it. It was like this big epic scene around finding this thing. I do, however, love The Rock's reaction to his new gun. Oh, shit. And just when you think maybe the movie was starting to become its own movie... We can't let them get to the surface. If it breathes, kill it. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Wow. So I guess the creatures start disabling the computers in this facility, making it more difficult for everybody to get around. Because, as I said, the creatures were scientists at one point, and now they've turned into creatures. I just want them to cut to that happening. Like the creature's just like, I remember this. I know I do. I remember this. I, oh, it's not the water. I remember this. But, oh, I did it. Yes. I just want to see that in this movie. So as I alluded to earlier, The Rock at this point just starts losing his mind. He just goes crazy. He starts killing members of his own team just because they asked questions. Mutinous insurrection is punishable by death. It was his first mission! And it's not going to be my last. And he just goes nuts! And now we have like a war, I guess, between Carl Urban and The Rock in this movie. Doom 2005 has one very special thing about it. It features possibly the most abrupt character shift I've ever seen in a movie. The Rock just loses his mind all of a sudden and goes rogue. And gratefully for the screenwriters, a creature shows up very fast so they don't have to explain what just happened. That is such a movie cliche for a terrible script. Oh boy, we don't know what's happening. Just, just throw something at the screen and everyone will forget about it, right? So it becomes clear that our hero in this movie is Carl Urban. Rosamund Pike then gives him an injection and then we get... The scene. We have a long, unbroken take that is supposed to look like a first-person shooter moment from the video game completely transferred over to the movie. And it's hard to tell if it's supposed to be hilarious or not, because there are far too many funny moments. It should have been just a really fun moment, but unfortunately, it looks terrible. There's nothing convincing about it. It genuinely feels like a cutscene right out of a video game. It doesn't feel like it belongs in this movie. It feels like the studio just went, hey, you gotta have an FPS moment. And they went, okay, we'll, we'll just kind of throw it in here. Uh, it genuinely feels like one of those throw everything at the wall and see what sticks moments. And because once again, the screenwriters seem to have completely lost any sense of whatever story they were trying to tell, The Rock shows up and I guess they're just gonna fight now. He's got a bite mark and he's changing and they're gonna have a big battle, I guess. And holy shit, this is when the movie gets amazing. <laughs> The Rock turns into a fucking monster. <laughs> Look at that. It's the greatest thing I have ever seen in my life. I had no idea this was in this movie. I just popped it in. I had never seen it before. I didn't even know Carl Urban or Rosamund Pike was in this movie. I started watching it and I was just blown away. The Rock turns in to a freaking monster. Look, the movie didn't have much going for it already. It was basically sneak around quietly the movie, but like at least it was a movie. You could kind of watch it and accept the stupidity. As soon as The Rock goes nuts, the movie just loses all sense of whatever it was and becomes insanity. It's kind of entertaining though. So the fight is over and the movie just kind of ends. 
It's like the film was an okay, guilty pleasure type movie you'd find on the Sci-Fi Channel in the middle of the night, and then it just lost all sense of character motivation or storytelling of any kind. Doom isn't that great. I think most people already knew that. It's a game that really doesn't have to be a movie. If you really just want to watch the FPS scene, you can probably find it on YouTube somewhere. The rest of the movie is just like a thing that's like built around a very flimsy idea that's essentially just a ripoff of Predator and Aliens. But it does have The Rock as a monster. So I mean, that's a major plus. <laughs> for anything. Guys, I've had a great time talking about crappy video game movies leading up to Assassin's Creed. Look forward to that review very soon, and I'm excited to bring another series of movie reviews to you very soon. I'm having a great time doing this. You guys are the best, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.